he decried exactly what his church should be called. Quote, For thus shall my church be called in the last days, even the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Close quote. Travis Wayne gets on. I was hoping to go to bed, but I made the mistake of checking on the, uh, oh, got a couple of, uh, you know, I made the mistake of checking the, uh, comment replies. Should have waited until the morning. Carol, you're disrespecting me. You should already know by now, I already did all the research of what I talk about in my videos. I've been doing this for years. And so in my, in latter days Mormons shall, you went and commented on somebody else's comment, which is a naughty no-no for which I would have to delete this because the particular uh, person that I approved the comment of was asking a genuine question. <clears throat> and it had to do with Joseph Smith and his involvement with polygamy. And so I emailed him back <laughs> explaining in summary form what was really going on in the big picture. And yet Carol thinks that she can own me just because we're a distant relative. Nobody can own me. I use science. I don't use other people's books. Shame on you, Carol, for not understanding this. And so, I will go over it and show you how I do not fear being owned by anybody. She says, I would suggest that you read the book. The Joseph Smith papers are the primary source documents. I don't need to go to other people's books. And so she does the typical one, sacred loneliness. See, he needs to be quoting from primary source materials. And it's not the witness, so-called, because witnesses lie. He goes into detail about Smith's wives. No, it's all a fraud. Both critics and Mormons, you've been lied to by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. They have to make Joseph Smith a polygamist to defend Brigham's polygamy. 
just like they have to defend that the successor for Joseph Smith has to be the president of the Quorum of the Twelve because Brigham was. These are some no does that investigators look for. Joseph Smith was not a full-blown polygamist because just like with the change in the name of the church which is in that video same with polygamy when did Joseph Smith begin polygamy the Book of Mormon denounces polygamy six times Joseph Smith's 1835 edition of the Doctrine and Covenants has a whole section on monogamy condemning polygamy so when did Joseph Smith decide to throw it all away and become a polygamist give you a hint it's the same time that he supposedly changed the name of the church you're not looking for the big picture clues to put the pieces of the puzzle together nobody can own me on this I've already established the facts from the evidence and yet time and time again people do not go to those videos and so they go to these other videos or in this case a comment and they think they can own me shame on you Carol and so she also brings up my children are in direct line from Levi Hancock a general authority and a member of the 70 presidency we're gonna to get to that because this is how why check who was a close relative of Fanny Alger the handmaid of Joseph Smith these two lines married each other Hancock and Algar he knew that Joseph was having the affair all the while he did huh he saw it he was watching how did he know if he wasn't a witness how did he know <sighs> dear God so she then says you were so convinced Joseph was a saint from the beginning so I doubt anything I say will change your mind yeah because you're not giving me anything you're giving me hearsay from an author you're giving me a false accusation he didn't see it he didn't watch Joseph stick it in her dear God and so now she's accusing me falsely of confirmation bias which is what she just pulled on me shame on you Carol you're that close to getting banned I do not tolerate hate from ignorance and so then she threw in another comment an hour later just as a reminder my ex's mother was a Hancock and a totally devout Mormon until her death you're not getting it being a devout Mormon means you're the bad guy so knowing the facts I know all I have to do now with any new name that people throw at me I just have to check for a Danite connection if I can find a Danite connection I see the compromised position that the person's in because that's what the Danites did so let's go over Levi W Hancock born 7th of April 1803 died June 10th 1882 Levi Ward Hancock born in Springfield Massachusetts to Thomas Hancock the third and Amy Ward <clears throat> in 1830 while living in Ohio Hancock heard Latter-day Saint missionaries Parley P Pratt Sidney Rigdon and Oliver Cowdery preaching in Mayfield because Sidney Rigdon 
was the preacher out in Ohio. The person who wrote this apparently didn't know this. Parley P. Pratt was one of the congregants of Sidney Rigdon, and because of his excellent writing abilities, was often used by Sidney Rigdon to give sermons. And so sure enough, Sidney Rigdon, while writing the Book of Mormon for the Smiths, put in some of Parley's work and then had it arranged through the Smiths that when Parley was in Palmyra, lo and behold, the Book of Mormon, and he read it. The church even made a movie of it. He read it all through the night, and when he finished in the morning, he was converted and wanted to be baptized and went back to Sidney Rigdon and said, hey, here's this Book of Mormon. This is awesome. And then Sidney Rigdon joined the church in December of 1830. Plausible deniability. And so 1830, it's difficult to hear because December is when Sidney joined. <laughs> There's not many days left until <laughs> So let's find out when Sydney uh, Sydney rigged in. Seriously, you're making me type it all out. AI is supposed to improve all of this and I'm not seeing the AI improvements here. Okay, Baptist minister, Latter-day Saint leader in Ohio. Early September 1830, Rigdon's associate Pratt was baptized into the church. 1830, September. <laughs> uh, in October, Pratt and Zeba Peterson began to preach, began a mission to preach to the American Indians. They visited Rigdon and his wife in Ohio. <laughs> oh my God, who writes these? Rigdon read the Book of Mormon in 14 days and <laughs> proclaimed its truthfulness and was baptized November. Oops, I'm sorry. It wasn't December, it was November 14th, apparently. <clears throat> in December 1830, Rigdon traveled to New York where he met Joseph Smith. That's probably where my associate memory got screwed up. And so, yeah, still a month and a half. Uh, and so Sidney Rigdon proceeded to convert hundreds of members of his Ohio congregations. You gotta catch on to these things. Knowing the real church history helps you realize the errors that the Mormons are making here, but you can see the bigger picture with. <clears throat> and so, yeah, he was part of the hundreds that Sidney Rigdon was involved in converting. Did it on purpose. He needed a bigger speaking audience. That's what he did it for. That's what he got paid for. That's why it's in the Book of Mormon. Right there at the end, that's Sidney Rigdon. His, his uh, desires and some changes from what Alexander Campbell refused to do when Sidney Rigdon asked to have it done. So he took his ball and went home and then was paid by this mess with being Joseph's number one to the end. And so, yeah, November 16th, 1830. Two days after, wait a minute. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's some pretty fast work. Uh, okay, he 
married Clarissa Reed uh, March 20th, 1831. <clears throat> and so it's not polygamy. No polygamy at this point. Oh no. That Joseph, he's up to something. God, pisses me off. When people who subscribe and follow then all of a sudden do something stupid. <sighs> Ordained an elder by Cowdery in 1831. Served a proselyting mission to Missouri with Zebedee Coltrane. Uh, preached in Indiana and Illinois. Uh, another mission in 1832 in January to Ohio and Virginia. Returning to Kirtland, he was present for the founding of the School of the Prophets in 1833. 1834, participated in Zion's camp which means he knows about the name of the church. Uh, February 28, 1835, ordained a 70 in the church and was selected as one of the first seven presidents of the 70. And it's unclear as to which 70 because the Mormon obviously doesn't want to know and doesn't want to let you know. There were two groups of 70 because there were two groups of 12 apostles. One was called the High Council. They were the administrative standing High Council. And they had 70 to assist them in their duties and responsibilities. Brigham Young had that change to stake High Council with stake 70s, demoting them. And then there was the 12 traveling apostles with their 70. So it's unclear as to which one he was a part of because the Mormon is ignorant on this matter. And so nonetheless, on April 6th, 1837. Hancock was released from this position because it was mistakenly believed that he, like five of the other presidents of the 70, had already been ordained a high priest. Thus needs to go into the high priest quorum. When it was discovered that this was not the case, Hancock was restored to his position on 3rd September, 1837. That was quite a long time to resolve that. He served as 70 for 47 years. Nope, doesn't matter. You're jumping ahead, you're skipping some stuff. September 3rd, 1837. And then we jump to 47 years later. What's missing? Huh. They jumped the gun. And so then they go back in time, uh, talking about, uh, wrote words to several songs, you mean hymns, uh, was a part of the Far West Temple Cornerstones in 1838. Seriously? It's not one thing? They have three separate links, and you're thinking it's going to explain the Temple Cornerstones of Far West. <clears throat> Hancock followed the Latter-day Saints as they moved to Missouri and then to Nauvoo, Illinois. See, they're leaving out information that's kind of vital to identifying who this guy is and what's going on. He was a member of the Nauvoo Legion and the Nauvoo Police Force. Legion, oh my god. In 1843, Hancock was made the chief musician in the Nauvoo Legion. Apparently they don't understand that the Nauvoo Legion is the militia. 
Oh, the Nauvoo Legion, was that a marching band? <laughs> and he was one of the members in Missouri that sustained the truth of the Book of Commandments. 1833. They didn't put that in there. You gotta click on the link. Signed his testimony. And he added, never to be erased. See what they're doing here? They're fluffing him up. His testimony signed with never to be erased about the Book of Commandments. What about the 1835 Doctrine and Covenants? <clears throat> In 1844, oops, red alert. Sorry, Carol, your ancestor is a Danite. He turn-coded in 1838. That's why that's missing. In 1844, Hancock became a member of the Council of Fifty. That is Brigham Young's secret combination government. And since you joined me after Thanksgiving last year, you missed the Book of the Law that Nelson had rushed out to add to the Joseph Smith Papers right before Thanksgiving. The Book of the Law, I did a whole long series on. I think it's still on the homepage. In that book, which they rushed, and so they didn't type it out, and so I had to download every single page. And in so doing, I found that the names that were in there, because Joseph Smith, or Brigham Young, had put those names in with Joseph Smith's papers and had them bound in a book. They're supposed to be separated. Joseph Smith's journal entries are not part of the Book of the Law. If you understand how bookmaking was done back then. And so there were some obvious red flags going on in that as I go over in the book with you, in the video series with you. And to cut to the chase, I remember Levi Hancock listed in that ledger. They did not pay Joseph for the temple to be built, the Nauvoo Temple. These were the list of the Danites of Brigham Young and Heber C. Kimball. These were the lists of those polygamous women who were complicit in the abominable practice of polygamy. And they tried to frame certain people like Sidney Rigdon and Hiram Smith. But they did it in a sloppy way because they couldn't actually use them and their signatures. They went through polygamous women who were forced to claim that they were the polygamous wife. just sickens me that nobody God, everybody's a denialist you think you know anything and you didn't study any of this you heard God it's just sickening so yes this council of 50 was a secret combination government while Joseph Smith was running for president. 
This was one of the plans, plots, if Joseph Smith happened to win the presidency. They were going to have Joseph Smith assassinated as president, and then Brigham Young with his Council of Fifty and Danites would cry foul and militarily take over the United States. Martial law. And thus, establish the kingdom, overthrowing the government of the United States of America. But, in 1844, we see that some other plot was instead being hatched. And so they instead had Joseph Smith murdered in Carthage jail. Abraham Lincoln then became the fall guy. by the Confederates, the other branch off from the core that the Danites came from. And so for Levi Hancock to be a part of this Council of Fifty, he knew Joseph was innocent and was put in because they turned him in 1838. If I were to go over that list of those who signed that name in 1830, signed their name in 1838 as part of the election interference to decertify the election. Any of this sounding familiar with what happened in January 6th and 2020's election? We had several Danite descendants involved in this one that just happened. The exact same pattern. God, people's ignorance appalls me. Thinking they can own me. Bleep you all. America is about to fall this year because of the church. And all of you are either guilty knowing this or you're just stupid because you didn't do your research. And so yeah, that book of the law was the secret combination economy. They paid Brigham Young. And that money was used to pay to murder Joseph Smith. That money was used for Brigham Young and his vanguard company to flee the United States, to come to this valley. All I needed to see to know what Levi Hancock is really all about. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he's also in my mom's family line too, since you're related to him. And in fact, I do recall a number of Hancocks that I've done baptisms for the dead for prior to. <coughs> but that was decades ago and my mom was a little hesitant she had to do the, her names she didn't like anybody touching her family line lines so this is how you do it you go over somebody in church history and you look for a connection to the Danites because started out innocent two days after Sidney Rigdon got baptized <laughs> so it, this did fill in more of the bigger picture but that's just fluff stuff you know it's 
a, a little butterfly on the big panorama billion piece puzzle. <laughs> it's not crucial to identifying what the puzzle actually is. <clears throat> but seeing the Council of Fifty is. And I already know what it is. It's just a little cheekbone or a little cheek piece that was fit in. I already knew it was a cheek. It was just a matter of going, oh, it's Levi Hancock in this particular case. Council of Fifty, which I could see his name on the list of the Council of Fifty in the Wikipedia page anyway. <sighs> which I could just do by clicking on it. And it wasn't a Latter-day Saint organization. It may have been a Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saint organization. These are things that you have to have factually established and written down so that you can reference them. You need to ask yourself, when did this change? The Book of Mormon says we're not supposed to practice priestcraft. When did it change? Oh, 1838. Um, are we sure? <laughs> You're already supposed to know that's when Brigham cooed the church. <sighs> and critics, shame on all of you. <sighs> so, I'm going to bed angry.